Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the sixth video in the STM32 Modbus series, and today we will see how the master will modify a single and multiple registers in the slave device. This is again going to be a continuation from the previous video, where we programmed the STM32 to respond to the queries regarding reading coils and inputs. In today's video, the master will send a request to modify the register values in the STM32, and we will program the STM32 to handle this request. Basically we will be working with the function codes 6 and 16, but from the slave perspective. The function code 6 is to write a single register, where the master can write only one memory word, that is 16 bits. The function code 16 is to write the multiple registers, but the master can request a maximum of 123 registers. I am going to continue the same project from the previous video, and I have already modified it. Here in the main file, I have added two more cases. In case of the function code 6, we will call the function write single register, and for the function code 16 we will call write holding registers. These functions are defined in the Modbus slave.c file. Let's first discuss the single register. This is the format of the request sent by the master. It contains the slave ID, the function code, the address of the register, the two bytes of data master wants to write, and the CRC. In the function, we will first extract the address of the register. If the address is more than 49, we will send an exception regarding illegal data address. This is because we have only defined a total of 50 holding registers in the database, whose addresses vary from 0 to 49. If there is no exception, we will modify the database with the new data. The registers are 16-bit in size and therefore the data arrive in two bytes, with higher byte being sent first. We will combine the two bytes to make a 16-bit value, and store it in the register's position in the database. Now comes the response. In case of single register, the slave response is exactly same as the master's query. So here we will simply copy the data from the Rx buffer into the Tx buffer. Finally send the data, the CRC will be calculated in the send data function itself. Now let's see the function to write multiple registers. Once this function is called, we will first find the address of the start register. Then find the number of registers requested by the master. If the number of registers is more than 123, we will send an exception. This is as per the Modbus standard that we saw in the beginning of the video. Then calculate the address of the last register requested by the master. Since we have the database for only 50 registers, if the end address is more than 49, we will send another exception. Here I have defined an index variable to keep track of the bytes in the Rx data buffer. Next we will copy the data from the Rx buffer into the database. The data in the holding registers is 16-bit in size, so we will combine the two bytes from the Rx buffer. After each value has been saved, we will increment the start byte, so that the next value can be stored at the next position. The loop will repeat as many times as the number of registers requested by the master. Now the slave will send a response to the master. The format is shown on the top right corner. We have the slave ID, the function code, the start register address, and the number of registers. Finally we will call the send data function to send the response. The CRC will be calculated in the function itself. Let's build and debug the code now. I have added the holding registers database in the live expression. This is because the values are not going to change here, but you can see the updated values in the live expression. In the master software, we need to open a new window to perform the write operation. 
Here we have the same configuration that we have been using in all the videos so far. Let's start by testing the single register. Let's say the master wants to write the register at the address 40005. Since it is writing only one register, the function code is set to 6. Here you can set the value for the register. The current value at 40005 is 4444. And the master wants to update it to 12345. Here you can see the query prepared by the master based on the above setup. Alright the slave sent exactly the same response to the master, and here you can see the data has been updated. Let's try another address. This is the register at 40,021. And the master wants to write 10,000 here. You can see the value has been updated. This change is not going to reflect in the database values, so you must see it in the live expression. So writing the single register is working well. Now let's move to multiple registers. This time the master wants to write four registers, starting from 21. You can see the function code has been changed to 16. Let's update the register values. You can see the four registers have been updated with new values. I also tried writing the decimal values, but since the data is unsigned 16-bit, the values were rounded off to the nearest integers. Now let's see some exceptions. We know the master can request a maximum of 123 registers, so if it try to request 124 of them, the slave will send an exception saying illegal data value. Similarly, the database only contains 50 registers, so if the master want to write more than that, the slave will send an exception saying illegal data address. Although it can write the 50th register, since it's defined in the database. Now let's quickly see if the values we wrote are actually readable. Here the master is going to send a read request for the register at address 50. The function code is set to 3. Here you can see the updated data that we just stored at that address. Let's read these four registers, starting from the 21st. Let me change these to unsigned integers. Here you can see the updated values of the registers. So I hope you understood how to perform write operations as a slave device. We will continue with the series, and in the next video I will cover writing coils. That will be the last video of this series for the time being. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.